Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Somerville Neighborhood News Roundup with the Somerville Journal and I am joined per usual in our studio with the ever wonderful and dedicated journalist here, <laughs> Julia Taliesin. Thank you for being in the studio. Thanks for having me, Erica, as always. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we will dive right into some of these topics here. The first one being the um, recent update around the Community Benefits Agreement here in Union Square. Yeah. There are some positive um, results. Yeah, what, big, big what, news. What is happening? What's happening? <laughs> um, so this is kind of, you know, hot off the presses, I guess. Um, last night, the CBA was officially presented. Um, the negotiating team, who's been negotiating with US2 for about a year, almost every week, mm -hmm. finally presented the community benefits agreement to the Union Square Neighborhood Council, which is a super big deal. Yeah. Uh, this has been a long time coming. Um, the official um, CBA was published on the 13th of August. It was just presented last night. Um, on the 20th, I, yeah, that, that, that right. was last night, yep. the 20th, um, and now begins the community process. Um, so, you know, take a look online. Um, the journal's going to have an article up about it today with the link to the document itself. Awesome. It's super readable. Um, you know, it definitely helps if you're oriented, you know, in the issue, in the ongoing process of this. Right. But it is, you know, it's possible to understand, you know, the kind of benefits that Union Square community is going to get from this agreement and how it's going to be enforced and followed through upon. So I encourage everyone who's really interested in it to read the CBA itself. It's not yeah. that hard to get through. Um, but we're going to have an article up about it. Um, you know, there have been some people tweeting about it. I know Ben Yoon Campen tweeted up, you know, a little kind of summary of it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, now that it's been presented to the board, it's been referred to a vote and the community process is going to begin. So over the next month or so, you know, it, we'll see when exactly the community meeting happens. but. The Union Square Neighborhood Council is going to present it to the full membership. Um, so it, it'll be a public meeting. Anyone who is interested and in invested or a voting member can attend to learn more. They can ask questions. Um, I was talking with um, Ben Baldwin about this, and he said that um, this will most likely happen probably around like September 20s, okay. that meeting. Um, and then after that community process happens and there's some feedback, um, it's after that that it would be referred to the membership for a vote. Got it. Um, and that's when the ratification would happen. So it's this, moving along, though. It, it is moving along. This is, this is it's really happening. exciting. Yeah, it's really <laughs> exciting. Um, and kind of once that all happens, um, you know, it requires a two thirds um, approval vote of whoever votes of the membership. Um, to get that ratified, and, and then it would be official. So uh, probably, you know, with, within the next two months, I, you know, I think it's really likely, maybe even sooner, that this will yeah. be like official, official. Yeah. Um, but you know, just to you know, loop in the awesome work SMC is doing. There's going to be an event on Monday at Vox Pop, yep. um, kind of a CBA explained with the Somerville Community yeah. Corporation, which yep. is kind of like a you know a pre-community meeting, community meeting yeah. almost. Um, so kind of as as any community members who are interested prepare to engage in the public process exactly. around this, yep. they can come and like talk to people who have been really, really like ears deep in this yeah. and get some like kind of more detailed questions answered. There are a lot of numbers in this document. They right. can ask about those numbers. What's the percentage of affordable housing? You know, how is this going to be mandated? You know, how are we going to hold US2 accountable? How are we going to stay accountable? What's the city of Somerville's role in all of this? You know, because one thing that's important to note about the CBA is like, this is historic. However, a lot of the things in the CBA are contingent upon permits from right. the city. So, right. so there's more, there's more, kind of um, logistical support mm -hmm. that has to happen That's before this yeah. happens. And like, you know, this is the first phase <clears throat> mm -hmm. of the project. So, you know, a lot of it addresses the D2 block right behind us, the right. D4 block. Um, what is really saying, there's some kind of more general things like, you know, there was going to be one neighborhood park, now there's three. You know, that's a really cool more thing. You know, they, open green space. Yeah, more open yeah. green space. We did not, you know, they did not get um, underground parking, but, you know, people are excited about the fact that, you know, more neighborhood parks, more open and civic space. Right. Um, and they're still working with US2 to, to um, you know, partner on bringing that elevator to make the right. Green Line station more accessible right near here. Um, so there's, there's a there's lot of progress, stuff yeah. packed in, yeah. into this. So it's, it's really worth a read. Um, and I, you know, I really encourage anyone to, I'll, I'll be there on Monday if I can, yeah. I, I really want to, um, to get my own questions answered as I, you know, well, orient myself on this. We're going to be recording that event as well so we can, um, you know, yeah, distribute so keep an that eye out. out to the, yeah. to the population. Yes, but this will be ongoing and like, you know, please, you know, to kind of, you know, reach out to the community if you have questions, like, 
please reach out to me. I'm happy to connect you with people who can answer them. I'll probably have some of the same questions. We can get them answered together. Um, I can write some stories about it. It'll be great. Um, but there will be ongoing coverage about this kind of as it unfolds over the next couple months. So yeah. keep an eye out. And I mean, just kudos to, because um, I mean, we we're talking about just the last year of these weekly meetings. But I remember when there was the original forming of community mm. organizations and churches and activists almost four years ago. And wow, we've come so far. And also, like, I'm so proud of the work because so much of that organizing work and how it evolved into then a, a city supported um, neighborhood council, you know, with the negotiations. So much of that groundwork has been reflective in this, in this CBA, which mm -hmm. is just. That's community participation does matter, and it's a it's a lot of labor of love, and just a lot of um, respect and acknowledgement <laughs> to everyone who's been working yes, <laughs> behind curious. the scenes um, from four years up until the last year. So, um, awesome! Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you for that update, and we hope to see people um, at the Monday's event and all the other different um, upcoming meetings. To switch gears here, and one that hits home um, in Somerville, Somerville Media Center, um, the the recent FCC rulemaking order, um, and how that could impact mm -hmm. our organization among many of the other ones across the country, as well as the municipalities. Mm -hmm. So you did an excellent story, which we are very appreciative of, <laughs> of in terms of just educating people about a somewhat complex mm -hmm. issue, but breaking it down in a really great way. So if you want to elaborate on, on the story. Sure. Yeah, I mean, this is this is really definitely a bringing the national news home moment. Yeah. Um, I mean, this, this is not just going to impact Somerville. And, right. and because it's not just going to impact Somerville, it, it has this kind of broader, deeper impact. Mm -hmm. it, it may be felt rather acutely, you know, depending yeah. on how this plays out. Um, but I think it's important, you know, um, to kind of orient in the timeline of this. So, so the FCC, you know, they were, they've been considering this for a while, right? Mm -hmm. This has been something they've been looking at and going back and forth on, but the, the vote officially happened um, in early August, Correct. right? So, so, and it was a close vote. It was a three to two vote, you know, mm -hmm. with, with two people strongly disagreeing with this. Um, Some excellent quotations from the, from the, from, yes. the, dis from the disagreements. Yes, but. definitely, you know, keep an eye out for those. Yeah. Um, but it, they have voted. It's, and it's, the way it plays out is very com is very complex, mm -hmm. as you know. Um, but they are essentially voting to limit access to federal funding for community media mm -hmm. through various channels. Yes. Um, and you know the, the kind of nitty gritty of it is um, is complicated. Um, but the hope the, the the hope that you know some community activists, media centers, um, you know attorneys who are involved in community media process, um, there's some hope here because. Um, people have said that this rule change, this order, could possibly violate the Cable Act of 1984, right. um, which gives people some grounds to challenge it. Sure. Um, no challenge as of today has officially been brought. I think right now a lot of these groups are, I mean, regrouping and like yeah. doing their research, getting their It's not even officially together. the register yet. Exactly, right. so exactly. We're on that. It's, yeah. not, it's not quite happening yet. Um, but, you know, this, it, the vote happened, which is important, However, it's not done yet. Yeah. The, the process around it isn't done yet. So because of these possible lawsuits, you know, that's something that it could, it could stay it, or even if it doesn't immediately stay the impact, it could kind of complicate right. <laughs> matters for you know, how this goes into effect and yeah. when. Um, but I think the other thing to keep an eye out for um, is how municipalities are going to respond to this, because yeah. you know, the, things move slow in the federal government, um, and you know, municipal governments have slightly more ability you know they don't have Correct. bottomless budgets but they have a little bit more ability to work with their communities work with their community mm -hmm. media centers um, and with their budget you know to to try to kind of mitigate the immediate impacts yeah. um, so you know I spoke with um, the mayor he is you know really unhappy with this obviously I mean any anyone committed to transparency and yeah. you know open government because this you know this impacts several media center but it, it impacts their ability to have oh, yeah. city cable to, to yeah. broadcast you know city meetings it's 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 a big it's, it's twofold they they would also exactly. lose like their franchising authority power so they are kind of in this position of yeah. like the cable companies can bypass yep. they don't have to know they no longer have to go through the cities yep. municipalities which is totally like 
there's a lot of harm there. And the other thing is that, yeah, they can start charging market value to all these in-kind donations mm -hmm. that have been given to many media centers over the years mm -hmm. and then deduct that from the annual mm -hmm. revenue, which could leave people with the tiniest yeah. budget to maybe even possibly having to owe money, mm -hmm. which is just mind-blowing, but to the fact of like it yeah. violates the 1984 Cable Act is a huge right. ground for a lawsuit. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so I think the important thing to keep in mind with this one, I mean, any, anyone who is interested and committed to, you know, transparency, community media, to having this possible, I mean, keep an eye out, you know yes. what I mean? Like, just, just watch the issue, see what's happening around lawsuits. Often it can be really valuable for people to send in mm -hmm. their opinions, their support, you know, um, for these um, dissents. So, you know, stay engaged. Um, you know, I know, you know, we're not all bottom, bottomless pits of money, but if you are someone who's able to donate, this is the kind of thing over the next six months to a year when this may take effect to donate to your community media centers. Yeah. Not, not me, <laughs> not, but, but Somerville Media Center to keep um, media like this and alive. we're holding a <laughs> few upcoming fundraiser events mm. that um, I, I don't want to let it out of the bag yet because we, we're, <laughs> still, we're still confirming the dates, but... Um, during the week of Community Media Week in oh, October, awesome. we're looking to host a, a benefit comedy show and uh, in Somerville. And so we're just confirming those details and cool. we'll, we'll let that info out there. Well, there you there. go. A fun opportunity yeah, a fun to support opportunity. your community media center. Right. And so, yeah. And also, you know, we have really awesome engaged politicians in this city, right. but now's, now's the time to, to tell them. I mean, tell your counselor, tell the mayor that you, you, this is important to you and you want the city to be thinking about this, to be acting, to be proactive about, you know, getting funding allocated somehow, even if it's more interim yeah. while this, so, because right now it's just, you know, as you said, it's not even on the register, right? So we really don't know at this stage the timeline of impact, right. but once that starts becoming apparent, you know, I'll do my best to communicate it. I'm sure you will as well, and um, just stay kind of stay informed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, anyway, yes. Close to home. <laughs> we we will continue this conversation because this yeah. is not at all the the end. And uh, thank you for your for your coverage on this. Um, so uh, a, an initiative out of the city of Somerville, a diversity catalog. Yeah. Um, what What is this for those who don't know? I'm, I myself, I had to also sure. look it up. But yeah. It sounds really awesome. Yeah. Um, so this, I just wanted to bring some attention to it because you know I, I think it's a really cool initiative and um, that's part of the cool part of my job. I get to bring attention <laughs> to cool stuff. Um, but this is something um, a lot of counselors have been working on, but I think Counselor um, Mba kind of pioneered the kind of idea for this um, that really you know, as all this development is hitting Somerville and happening in Somerville, some of it is really amazing and is going to eventually bring incredible revenue to the city. Um, but right now, there's construction in yeah. our streets. Business are being impacted today, and rents are due today. You know what I mean? So, so it's the impacts are being felt now, and the benefits and rewards aren't necessarily being felt now. So, the the hope for this diversity catalog is essentially to to preserve and protect the heart of Somerville. What, what Will said, um, or what Councilman Ba said, is that you know, when he was kind of walking around campaigning, um, you know, he talked to a whole lot of businesses. He's a counselor at large, so he kind of did the whole circuit, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and he was talking to them about like, how this is really immediate and, and scary and how they're afraid that you know, you know, they opened this business you know, as an immigrant in the 80s and they've been here for so long and they love Somerville, but you know, they've had to move their family out because they mm -hmm. can't afford it and they don't want to have to move their business and you know, they don't know what to do. And you know, they're really excited about the green line, but their you know, landowner is increasing their rents and there's no people because there's no green line yet. And you know what I mean, what is going to happen? So the point of this is to encourage these um, diversity-owned businesses, and there's a specific definition of that. So we have an article up online. The city has this post on their website. Um, it's you have to be 51% women-owned, minority-owned, um, LGBTQIA you know spectrum-owned, yeah. um, veteran-owned, injured veteran-owned, like there or disabled veteran. Um, there's a there's a whole. Um, kind of continuum of, of you know how you the identities that can be protected under this, um, and the whole idea is that you kind of submit you know it's not really an application it's it's more like a like a listing yeah. you know what I mean yeah. to the city to be kind of on this list, and um, they're going to use this for a couple things. Um, so they're going to use this to study. Um, so they want to know who you are mm -hmm. first of all, so that they can reach out to you um, and ask how can we be supporting you? What city services would be valuable? Um, you know, what can we be doing, you know what I mean, right. to help you. 
Um, so there's that aspect of it. And the other aspect is kind of marketing, that they're hoping that creating this list, they're going to have it on the website, they're going to hopefully use it in press releases. They want you know, the community to know, you know, if you want to support these businesses, if you want to support minority-owned businesses, here's a yeah, list, here's you know what I mean? Yeah, right. it's never been easier, you know right. what I mean? So go here, go here for lunch, go here for groceries, like, you know, that's kind of the that's idea. Huge. Yeah, um, so it's it's more of a tool, um, and the there's a deadline to kind of get on this list, right. September 13th, okay. so Friday, September 13th, you still got a few weeks, you'll be fine. Time's um, taken away though, yeah. this is an important resource. Yeah. And so it's, it's to help, it's just to help, you know, right. to, pr to preserve the soul of the city, right. you know, that's what the mayor said. I, I'm for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and then moving towards the last couple of topics yeah. here, um, community art. Yeah, I there's just so to, much popping you know, up everywhere. It's we wonderful. We talk about good news too, right? Yes, 100%. Summerville does a great job at this, and I love that. You know, while yes, the summer is a time of absolutely crazy construction and our streets being torn apart, you know, and repainted and traffic redirected. Mm -hmm. Like, there's also more art happening because it's summer. Yep. Um, so there's a really cool <laughs> installation at the Blessing of the Bay Park that has to do with like the tree species down there. The Welcome Project was involved. Um, so if you're going for a walk, you should check that out. I saw that when I went for a run the other day. Amazing, yeah, boom. Um, and there are gonna be some murals coming to the city. They're not painted yet, but there's a reception, I think this Thursday. Um, to kind of meet the artists. Uh, yeah. Dave Ortega of SMC is That's actually true. going to be moderating the I panel. Know. <laughs> um, so um, it's just, you know, some more beautiful things are going to be coming to the city, um, which is always exciting. And then there's also this um, sculpture that was just um, erected, this like massive, like Titan, like Diana sculpture just erected Ooh. on the Summer Nova campus um, last night, I think. So, um, just walk around. It's nice out. And that's I mean? where Arena and Brooklyn Boulders yes, are. Thank you. Just for those who don't thank know the, the new branding. The new branding of it, yes. Um, so walk around your city and enjoy the And I have to give a shout art. out yes. to Megan O'Brien, okay. who did the beautiful mural that um, connects um, East Somerville, like near Sullivan Square, that, that underpass going mm -hmm. towards Assembly, towards mm -hmm. Home Depot, mm -hmm. um, the a Lombardi underpass. It is awesome and she's a wonderful dear friend of mine and also um, just worked that was her first time doing such a, oh, a, cool. a huge mural project and she was so happy and she loves she loves Somerville so much and and she's done stuff with the Arts Council for for many years but she incorporated a lot of a lot of cool Somerville iconic landmarks in it but also really promoting and emphasizing like East Somerville mm -hmm. and so um, but yeah to that point there's art popping up everywhere and Kudos to the mayor for specifically putting mm -hmm. um, lots of money towards mm -hmm. public awesome. art. Mm -hmm. So um, I love that. And then closing up with eye on the elections. Yes. Just gotta yes. we gotta review because it's coming yes. up. The preliminary election is happening, sure is. and local elections are important. Oh my people. God, you gotta vote in the local yes. elections. Yes. <laughs> so um, oh goodness, today. Sorry, everybody. Is the deadline to make sure you're registered to vote in the preliminary election? So just the preliminary, which is to choose um, your narrow down your mayoral candidates and your candidates for Ward Three School Committee. Um, so I hope everybody's registered. <laughs> and for those um, watching it, I'm not sure what date. That's August yeah. 21st. Yes. So if you haven't registered by then, sorry, sorry. for the preliminary. Yeah, for the preliminary. However, there's still time for the general election, right. which is not until November 5th. Right. Uh, Tuesday. Um, so just, you know, the journal has partnered with Somerville Media Center to bring a whole bunch of profiles um, to the community highlighting these candidates. Um, not every candidate took advantage of it, but the majority of them did. So there are videos up online, there are statements up online um, of these candidates telling you about themselves and the work yep. they've done or the work they hope to do. Um, and we kind of, the journal, this um, SMC prioritized those preliminary elections, so those have been up since the beginning yep. of the month, um, and now we're kind of rolling out the rest. Um, so over the next couple weeks, we'll get up the rest of the school committee, the rest of the um, ward counselors, all of whom are not running opposed, um, and then the alderman, uh, sorry, oh my god, the counselor at large, the counselor at large race, um, of which there are eight candidates. Um, so there's no preliminary election, but there are eight candidates in the general election, which would be narrowed down to four. Right. Um, so keep an eye out for that. It's super important time to be engaged yeah. in city politics. As if you're, you know, paying attention, these people do a lot. They get, they, they, sure they, they make a lot of decisions. You know yep. what I mean? For better or for worse. On top so of their if you care, jobs, they're doing on top of their full-time yes. jobs, yeah, yes, that's important. So, so, so care. You yeah. know what I mean? Get, get involved. Um, yeah. And there's actually there's one other thing I, I just wanted to mention. Sure. Um, 
kind of a, along with the diversity catalog almost, I, I really, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on right now about development and business, and I think that's really important to talk about. Um, but I, it's really important to me that the Somerville Journal is, you know, as a community paper, reflects the community, as nerdy as that sounds. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been really trying to put a little more, put a little bit more effort into like finding small businesses, whether it be markets sure. or just people, yeah. like entrepreneurs, um, you know, crossing guards, yeah. officers who've worked in the city for 50 years or whatever, who like really spotlighting just, them, yeah, or? and and oh. just kind of highlighting them and their work in in what they've been doing in the city to kind of remind all of us of like what we're fighting for and what yeah. we're building for. Um, so if you know of a person, if you are a person, if you love a business that you don't think is getting enough traffic, please reach out to me. Um, I really, cool. I want to bring some attention to that. We should collaborate on that yeah. for multimedia purposes. <laughs> but yeah, so that's me. <laughs> Wonderful, Julia. All right, that wraps up, wraps it up this latest Somerville Neighborhood News Roundup with the Somerville <laughs> Journal. Um, thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, Julia, thank you for being here. Awesome. Thanks so much, Erica. We'll see you next time.